Hello, and welcome to the January 2025 edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. I am your host, Pamela Munger, and I'll be looking at the latest trends and market conditions within U.S. and global energy and sharing actionable insights powered by Vortex's tracking analytics. In this insight, we touch on America's seaborne crude exports, U.S. seaborne crude and fuel oil imports, Pad 3 motor fuels seaborne exports, transatlantic gasoline flows, and the latest impact of the OFAC sanctions. Crude supply is expected to remain ample in 2025, but potential U.S. tariffs could change trade flows drastically. Supply from U.S., Brazil, Guyana, Argentina, Canada, and Kazakhstan and Norway is expected to grow by around 1.3 million barrels per day, as estimated by Morgan Stanley, and 1.9 million barrels per day, as estimated by the IEA. The U.S., the largest crude exporter in the Americas, saw its seaborne exports average 3.9 million barrels per day in 2024, lower in comparison to 4 million barrels per day in 2023. Seaborne exports dropped to 3.8 million barrels per day in December 2024, despite expectations that an increase in tax-related destocking activity would boost exports toward the year's end. The decline in export volumes can be attributed to U.S. refiners raising their utilization rates in December, according to EIA data. Moving over to Latin America, Brazil ended the year strong with 1.7 million barrels per day of exports in December, a month-on-month increase of over 400,000 barrels per day. Guyanese exports, on the other hand, fell by 100,000 barrels per day month-on-month in December, but averaged 570,000 barrels per day in 2024, as FSPO Prosperity started producing Pyrira Gold Crude. Guyana's exports in 2025 are headed higher as the 250,000 barrel per day Yellowtail project and associated FSPO One Guyana comes online. Mexican crude exports had a roller coaster ride in 2024 with exports falling below 1 million barrels per day in March 2024 as Pemex diverted barrels towards Dos Bocas Omega refinery startup and increased domestic refinery runs. Since June 2024, the Dos Bocas refinery has struggled to start up with only nominal crude processing. This has forced Pemex to make barrels available for exports. These exports averaged 940,000 barrels per day in the fourth quarter of 2024, but fell to 920,000 barrels per day in December 2024. Looking ahead in 2025, America's exports might see some reshuffling in a scenario where President Trump imposes import tariffs on Canadian and Mexican crude. And as a result, exports of U.S. origin crude might decline as refiners process more domestic crude and there's less available for export markets. Canada and Mexican crude exports would then have to pivot towards Asian buyers and it would also incentivize U.S. refiners to import more Latin American grades to replace Canadian and Mexican barrels. Whether this scenario plays out or not is yet to be seen, but growing exports from the Americas will nevertheless continue to keep a lid on oil prices in a subdued oil demand environment going into 2025. Now let's take a look at where we currently are for U.S. seaborne crude imports in light of the potential tariffs on both Canadian and Mexican volumes. Canadian crude would be the most impacted as the TMX startup has benefited Pad 5 refiners. Nearly 350,000 barrels per day now ends up in the U.S. in addition to around 3.5 million barrels per day of pipeline imports from Canada. The U.S. Midwest refiners rely mainly on Canadian crude, and they'll need to turn towards domestic light, sweet grades, which are less optimal for their operations. 2025 may mean that all TMX crude goes to Asia 
if Trump applies the 25% tariffs on Canadian crude. In addition to OFAC sanctions, U.S. President Trump announced that his administration may impose 25% tariffs on Canadian and Mexican goods on February 1st. Now, if Trump's tariffs are implemented, U.S. refineries would also likely stop importing fuel oil from Canada and Mexico, given the drastic additional costs for U.S. refineries compared to importing from neighboring countries. While Canadian fuel oil exports to the states are relatively low, the tariffs pose a far greater threat to Mexican fuel oil exports, which most of the supplies going to the U.S. Gulf Coast and Atlantic Coast refiners. Losing such a highly valuable feedstock from Mexico could dent U.S. refiner margins as the fuel oil from Mexico is typically further processed into products. Mexico will likely redirect its West Coast fuel oil exports to Asia, Panama, and the Caribbean, while its East Coast fuel oil exports could end up in Northwest Europe and the Caribbean. Volumes that end up in the Caribbean could also be stored and then re-exported to other countries. Now let's take a look at the latest in Pad 3 motor fuel exports. Pad 3 refinery run rates ended the year at around 95%, boosting seaborne exports to historical highs towards the end of 2024. Inventory levels for gasoline and distillate have been ample or building in the major demand regions, while diesel exports continue to move to Europe, but could be curtailed in the near term due to cold weather in Pad 3 combined with a large spring maintenance season. Gasoline and blending components are increasingly finding homes in the Caribbean, likely for blending. However, despite the large volumes of exports coming out of Pad 3, the short haul nature limits the ton miles. In addition to Europe, we have seen Brazil start to take more U.S. originated diesel toward the end of 2024. The recent diesel exports surge from the U.S. Gulf could continue into 2025 particularly as more European refining capacity is being lost to shutdowns. Exports to Brazil from the U.S. Gulf Coast may also return, despite OFAC sanctions having little impact on flows. However, anticipated dampened Brazil demand may keep these volumes limited due to slow economic growth expected in 2025. As we start to think about the U.S. driving season in May and warmer weather, we start to look at indicators of what we can expect to see for gasoline demand. Despite having had a poor demand year in 2024 and starting off at a bit of a low point for seaborne imports, a large portion of the gasoline flows originate in Canada. If tariffs are applied to these imports, then we could see a higher pool on European originated gasoline flows. Now let's take a look at the latest sanctions issued by the U.S. Office of Foreign Assets Control, otherwise known as OFAC. These sanctions have placed a substantial part of the fleet carrying Russian crude, especially on Afromaxis to China, which has driven oil prices and freight rates markedly higher. Our big picture assessments on these individual tanker sanctions are that the Russian supply will not be lost, but a few cargoes might get delayed. The international market will turn to other operators, likely Greek. Also, new non-sanctioned Afromaxes could enter the crude trade and China demanding higher discounted barrels from Russia, which will likely drive price cap adherence. Now, all of this is happening to varying degrees and will help alleviate the current disruption and ultimately prevent any long-term structural loss of Russian crude in the global market. The OFAC sanctioned fleet largely represents lost tonnage for international flows, providing a welcome rate boost to global tanker operators, especially in the affected segments. Russia flows to China India and Turkey will continue on a mix of a refreshed gray fleet and higher price cap adherence. There are tankers that were active in other Russian routes 
Baltic and Arctic, and they are now switching to Russia Far East crude trade, which suggests Russia is prioritizing Far East trade over other routes. Now, will China continue to buy from Russia Far East? In 2024, over 80% of China's seaborne crude imports from Russia were from Russia Far East side, most ending up in the Shandong province. The overall raft of sanction for these 100 plus tankers is ultimately bullish for global crude freight rates, and of course, bullish for freight rates plying routes from Russia to China. So with that in mind, China refiners still want to continue to buy, but will want Russia to cut FOB prices for these Far East barrels so the delivered price would be tolerable. Urals are less important to Chinese buyers. If you go to outside Shandong province, these refiners can easily look towards West Africa and Middle East for supplies. They can afford to lose the Russian barrels from the other routes. Another factor to consider why we believe Russian supply will need to get to China, India, and Turkey is that it isn't so easy for other global producers to fill any gap left by the loss in Russian supply. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in February. 